All right, guys. Hey, thanks for joining me today. Uh, twenty nine fifty five. We got to take the take the cab off, the hood off. We got uh, some front planetary hubs to rebuild, and uh, the high low unit in the transmission is giving us some wonky wonky symptoms. And then uh, air conditioning and a few other miscellaneous leaks and and things to fix up. We'll, we'll probably jack it up and check axles, things like that um let me spin you around overall zoom out these uh these weren't that bad of it i know people really hammer on this generation of the the 2000 series online they they really hammer on these tractors quite a bit um th this is coming down um the shield i took the loader frame off and so we're we've already started the process but um all in all you had a good hydraulic pump straight from the row crop tractors yeah, the six cylinder was a fantastic engine in these tractors. Um, not the torque monster that you could create out of the 466 here, but uh, but for the weight of the tractor, you had plenty of engine. They were very powerful. Uh, great engine. The top shaft synchro was a, a good transmission. Uh, very, very few troubles with these transmissions that we've seen. Uh, big beefy final drive. Um, you, you know, he had a nice sound guard cab. <sighs> um, front axles seem fairly durable. The pivot pins do seem to be a little weaker than the row crop series or, or class of tractor. But um, yeah, overall, they're a pretty good tractor. The only quirks with these are. Uh, and the reason I wouldn't buy them is one, they're a little more miserable to work on because of just how the cab sits onto the the chassis. Everything's so kind of tight and low. Like the 4640, pff, you can just, you know, you can see the top of the transmission across there, and these you can't. Um, is there plumbing in here? So the way the PTO and the two speed or the PTO and the reverse or whatever option you have um, sits internally. Uh, it can start to get a little expensive in there, depending on how parts wear. Uh, then they had, so like your 2840s, for whatever reason, them were just notorious for it. Um, you got your hydraulic plumbing. <clears throat> Comes into the, underneath here. So these lines down here, they go underneath, and they go down under there into the front of the transmission case. And so you had two big pipes that came up to your shift cover. So if you had an open station tractor, you had your little shift cover there. Um, and then you had a bunch of, I think you had four pipes uh, in that shift cover. And them lines were notorious for breaking. And so if you had low transmission pressure warnings, um, if, if your front pump started cavitating, things like that, you check the sump screen. The sump screen looks good. Filters look good. Well, then you'd start doing some testing and seeing that you're just not getting oil up front. You got broken pipes and leaky pipes internally. Um, and so by the time they got to the 55 series, it seemed a lot less rare that them pipes would break. So they must have made some little changes along the way. Um, but the design for the most part was the same. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, they get they get beat up online pretty good, but all in all, other than a couple little quirks, they're really powerful for their weight class, and they're they're pretty good cattle hay tractors, to be honest. Um, I, I wouldn't be scared if I found a 3155 that had super low hours, even a 2955 with, with really low hours. I wouldn't be scared of it, but I would gladly pay a lot more money for a 6400, 7200, 7400 style tractor. Um, but yeah, so we're going to tear this one apart today, see if we can't get the cab off today. Um, I do have to go farming at some point, but we'll just see what, how far we can get. But yep, cab comes off and, and then uh, the other loader frame and the hood. And yeah, we'll, we'll see, see how far we get today. These are just a slow tractor to work on. So it's taken me seven and a half months and I got the battery boxes off, loader frames off, fuel tank protector off. And on this side, there's a lot of 
a lot of linkage up underneath there and uh, you can see them boop, up there and they're kind of a tough little bugger to get to because they tuck up under the cab the the nice thing is is your scv and three point are right there so they just unhook good and your cab mount them bolts are off they actually got a nice pocket on the outside um so that's there in the front right mount is off and then i just set instead of fighting these cables just set the whole dang box inside um and this mount is off so the only one i gotta do is we gotta get that auxiliary fuel tank off of there got him off of there and then we can get this mount and then we just got a couple couple wires on that relay and a few lines right there uh and then the throttle the throttle rod is just tucked in right there uh we got the kill cable to unhook from here that can stay with the cab <sighs> so not a whole lot left um to do and then we should be close enough uh we got heater hoses and a couple of little miscellaneous stuff but for the most part i think it's enough to get the the bracket bolted to the roof and get the i got the hoist here um but get the bracket bolted to the roof and um lift it up a couple inches and then you just kind of check to you scan under the cab you know because like your brake lines and all that kind of stuff and just lift it literally just a couple inches at a time well, we got our clutch you got a clutch move this airline um your hydraulic clutch on these tractors so you got the two little brake line fittings right there so then you got that to bleed out when you go back together that's not always a joyful experience but the nice thing is is that long rod lowers this auxiliary fuel tank down so i just roll my creeper chair underneath there and uh spin her down with the impact gun and the bottom end sits there the front end is still up on my chair so it doesn't just drop on the floor and uh so that's kind of nice so we got mm, some linkages here to double check and uh i might get the pressure washer here in the morning before i get much further and just give this a blasting and then clean this floor up clean this floor up in the morning and then uh continue on as they say and so we got our air air conditioning lines to uh to deal with and yeah we're getting there we're getting there there's a little less linkage every time and so yeah all right, I can't leave you hanging for the day without a little tip or trick taking these tractors apart. So you got your air lines and they go up to these joints up here. The small ones are 30 millimeter, the big ones an inch and five eighths. And you can see the shape, so that's your swivel. It's a it's a it's a quick coupler, so it's supposed to be able to be done under pressure, so you don't have to drain the air conditioning out. But if you go to loosen it, and you see that your lines are turning and your line is twisting, then on the back side is is a a hex, a nut that's on the pipe to hold the pipe from turning. If you put a wrench on there, and you still just can't get it to go, get your air hammer. You're going to see this air hammer on many tips and tricks videos. And you come in and you just, you're, you're not square, but you're not coming in at a, at a hard glance either. You're, you're, you're almost square on this joint, slightly angle, and you burp it. And then, uh, and then you hit it again. And it might not turn that much. It might not even look like it turned at all on you. But give her a, a couple little, burp, then readjust, burp, and uh, 
two, three, five, six of them. And then put your wrench on and 99.9% .9 of the time they'll start turning. Now you still might have to have the wrench on the backside holding it, but they'll turn. Same thing uh, on your 4020s. You got the hydraulic pipe right there. Um, let's look at this 4255 because that's the same thing. You got these big flare. <clears throat> you got the big, well, the plumbing's different, but you know, your 4020, you got a joint here. 4320, it comes back here a little bit. Um, you got the big flared hydraulic nuts. And uh, same thing. If you can't get them loose, before you automatically grab the heat wrench, take the air gun and prep, prep, give them a few burps, and they usually loosen right up. And uh, so let's leave you with that. Guys, thanks for more. For the, the, thank you very much for watching. And uh, we'll catch you on the next, the next phase. Back under the cab side, you got a hose here that goes up to the back of the cab. You got this rod here that goes up to the back. You got your park brake that goes back. You got your throttle lever and then your high low. They got that nice, it flips up, wiggle it out. And uh, <laughs> yeah, then um, on the other side, don't forget on the other side by your hydraulic outlet levers um we have a <clears throat> you've got a, a black bracket right there and you've got a bolt down there you got to get out so that bracket comes with the cab so it unbolts from that so i got the cab up hmm, you can see maybe a inch at the most in the back and just kind of double checking there's that line right there here's your park brake right there well that went pretty good got it set down i use block i like cinder blocks or concrete blocks they work out good they hold it at the right height so all your linkage and stuff hanging down isn't on the ground and uh yeah so washed up got them cleaned up a little bit um gosh you just never no matter how many times you wash, it just never is clean. But the next step is to pop the shift cover off and then get the transmission jack under here. And this will be our split here. So anything, you know, just like the cab, anything that comes from the tractor to the cab, we got to take off. Now, anything that crosses this line, we, we have to unhook. So it should be fairly straightforward nah, i didn't do a good job here i thought i got that better but apparently not but uh yeah got a little screwing around in here and then uh get this puppy split so we got the shift cover off you got two bolts in here that you have to take loose um and then you just got a bunch of bolts around here to take loose these are the two pipes that come down and they bend at the bottom and tie into the other pipes. And them are the ones that will crack at the bottom. And, uh, and then these four come up to your shift cover to do uh, your PTO and high, low and reverse or whatever options you got. If you have an open station tractor and you got them rubber bellows around the shift forks, by all means, by all means, um, keep them in good shape. There's supposed to be a little snap ring on the bottom and top. Um, and make sure that the little bellow doesn't have any tears or anything. I'm going to let the transmission oil just drip for a few minutes here. Um, when I dropped the plug, you heard some tink tinks into the oil pan, and the oil would not come out of the hole. So I took a magnet and kind of swirled around up in the hole, and you heard some more tinks, and then the oil finally came out. So... Um, I don't think we're wasting anybody's money by splitting it. It's not very often when you shift to John Deere two speed that it labors the engine a little bit and then shifts that that's really not a good sign, but so yeah, I'll get back when we get this thing rolled apart. Well, there we go. Just rolled her back. I forgot. I don't know if I said it uh, on our front half. 
drive some two by fours in there. Hit them with the hammer, drive them suckers in there, one on each side, and that helps the front end on all these tractors if you're doing any sort of splitting. Drive some boards up there and it helps keep them from rocking. And then drop your front drive shaft because as you roll this transmission back, it wants to spin this gear. And that's going to want to spin because right here's your mechanical front clutch. Right here's our two speed. And uh, we can see there's some pitting and grinding on that shaft a little bit, but you got these little kind of piston rings sort of deals. I've seen them, the ends, how they kind of have the little groove. They lock together. I've seen them get broke, and then there's your low, your transmission leak. But, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll gut this inside out and pull that two-speed out and then determine if we need to, depending what we find in here, do we need to pull the rock shaft cover to see what's going on in here as to why we're getting chunks out the drain plug. And so, all right. So I was really expecting to see a lot of damage on these discs, but everything looks really good in the two-speed itself. Um, and so which, which direction do we go from here? Uh, power flow through here is a little weird. Um, so the big gear here is your PTO. So the little gear on top is uh, live coming from the engine. And then the shaft comes into your two-speed, through your two-speed, and into your input of the transmission here. Uh, you got some gears here. So this one is live. You can see this nut attempting to turn a little bit. Um, you can see the gear inside there. Um, so you got some gear train here. So this runs your mechanical front clutch. Um, your PTO gear is always live off engine. And then here's your PTO shaft. See how I can spin that hub. And then he'll punch through here, go out the rear end. Um, and so we had metal chunks in the oil. And we had a, a high-low not working very well. Um, and the one... In the cab, the one shifter felt wonky, but out here, the shifter feels good. Um, but I'm, I'm half tempted to pull this rock shaft off just so we can get a visual into the transmission. Um, we had chunks come out the drain plug. The, we can't just be like, oh, your high-low is in good shape. Let's put her back together. Must be something else. Um, no. I, I I think it's worth popping this three point. And from this, from right here, um, this can come with uh, that can come with. Take this pipe off, and uh, maybe these SCV brackets. Yep, they'll come off with the bolt there. Um, so the SCV can come off, and then. Uh, Sneak that three point off of there, and then at least a guy can see he got a fighting chance to at least do some inspecting in there instead of just you know, yeah, I don't know where the chunks come from, but everything looked good. Um, so that's the fun part about fixing this stuff is sometimes it turns into a mystery. Um, but yeah, all in all, um, not a bad. <clears throat> Not a bad project so far. Um, and we might go forward as well. Um, we might end up dropping that front wheel clutch, pull that PTO out, and going after that transmission pump behind that gear uh, just, to, just to verify that that transmission pump is good um, and inspect it. Maybe, you know, debris has gone through it and scored the heck out of it. But, yeah. So, all right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll uh we'll catch you on the next one.